What's up there guys? Drone worship in your face. This comes to you courtesy of Snaptain. This is the second product I have reviewed for them now. Uh, I already did do a modification to this and I plan on doing a second modification. I'll be releasing those videos as needed to solve some problems that obviously came from the factory and I assume are going to plague the rest of these models. So you guys know me, I try to solve things as they need just because it's a toy does not mean it can't be made better. So let's talk about this. This is the new Snaptane 500 GPS platform drone. And for all of those uh, of you that are wondering, Snaptane is about to throw their hand into the hobby grade side of things very shortly with the SP700. Some of you guys don't even know about that drone yet. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm just saying. But anyways, think along the lines of MJX maybe, some bugs, who knows. Who really knows? But let's pull this out. So this is the transmitter. I'm going to be honest with you for Snaptane. This is pretty low quality. Uh, it does have some little pop rivets here that come out. So you have a good grip in your hand. This can hold most of your large device phones. There are foam padding inside here. A bunch of dedicated buttons on and off. Rechargeable USB. Uh, standard Android USB charger there. Um, I do not remember what this does, but I'm sure we can figure it out. Uh, this is for compass calibration. This is for um, gyro calibration. This is return to home, auto takeoff, GPS and altitude hold functionality, and then some dedicated buttons on here to change your speed rates on the top, and some camera buttons here. Push it once to take a picture, hold it down to take a video, hold it down to stop the video. Pretty easy to work with. Now, let's talk about this folding beast here. Uh, folds up fairly easily. Uh, as you can see, Snaptane has embroidered their beautifulness on top there by branding it. Snaptane, you can't really miss it. Does have a proprietary battery system. Unfortunately, mine did come with two batteries. One of them is so misformed that it doesn't actually fit in. So I only, unfortunately, got one battery. I also had to modify the camera tray uh, and do some things to this. We will be discussing that in a later video. However, I just want to say, for those of you guys that do have an SD card tray uh, slot down here, as you can see where the micro SD card slides in, if yours is hidden and it's pushed down too far and it's hard to extract, just loosen this screw and this screw and that will make all the difference. But on top of that, if you guys continue going further into it, you can actually um, do the mod that I have coming up. So just be looking for the SP500 mod because um, that will be coming around the corner. As you can see, some Snaptane branding on the sides here, some LEDs, front and rear, uh, I believe, green on the back, red on the front, I can't remember. We'll turn it on and find out. Um, I'll also show you the binding procedure. This is 1080p, no stabilization for the camera, but apparently this has a really freaking wide view. I'm gonna be honest with you, the field of view on this is actually supposed to be extremely wide. And last time I flew this, I had the camera down too far. So I'm gonna raise it up to see if I can keep it, uh, you know, level with the sky here, because I noticed that when I was flying, the ISO in the sky versus the ground versus the sky just looked really off. And uh, I, we do have some interesting colors in our trees right now because we're in Florida. So I thought we're gonna try this. Hopefully this footage comes out good. Um, if not, guys, I just want to tell you that if you point the camera down, it actually does a very good job of capturing some good 1080p footage. The detail scaling is not too bad. However, there is a ton of jello, and my modification will solve that. I have already done it to this unit, as you can see. Uh, well, you can't, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. So I think today I'm going to run this camera up. No, you know what? We are still going to leave it slightly tilted down. I guess I would rather see more of the ground than the sky. The sky's not really important, just some clouds. But this is going to give you that GoPro feel for those of you wondering lights on the front so you can tell the front from the back uh, you know even though like I said orientation can be seen by the legs uh, it is nice being able to see that little white uh, two LEDs on the front there that blink and tell you things so let's get this bound up the app that you guys are going to be binding to is the Snaptane Nova app on the Android market and uh, once you download that all you really have to do is turn on the drone first, then the transmitter, then wait on GPS. 
Now, I was very frustrated with this unit out the hole, to be honest with you guys, because it doesn't tell you how many GPS locks you have. So even when it says ready to fly, give it an extra two minutes before you take off, or minute at least. That way you can ensure that it has a very stable lock before you just take off. This is not running GLONASS that I'm aware of. This is legacy settings. So unfortunately with the old legacy GPS systems, this, you're looking at probably six to 10 satellites and that's about it. So just to be on the safe side, give yourself an extra minute or two minutes after it says good to fly. You may all of a sudden be like, oh, you'll be flying around and then lose GPS and that's just kind of the end of it. You know, so you don't want to do that. So I'm gonna take my phone out of the case. I'm gonna turn the brightness up. I don't think I'm gonna run a screen recording. Um, I don't think it's really necessary for this. Just know that it's very easy to set up, get connected to the Wi-Fi first, then open the Nova app. It'll automatically, once it connects to the Wi-Fi, know which drone you have. It'll say SP500, just hit start. And then from there, I would suggest, guys, that you go into the settings once you have FPV. Once you're seeing what the camera sees on here, go to settings at the top and take it out of beginner mode. You can adjust your altitude, uh, how far you want to fly. It says it'll go 500 meters. I highly doubt I'm going to be able to get video feed for 500 meters, but I think it'll be interesting to see if I can fly it further than I can see it. Yes, I know I'm talking a lot, but I want to cover everything. The other thing to remember with this, guys, as a good reviewer, is that I have yet to hear anybody say anything about what this drone runs on. Let's be specific here. 5G. The problem with 5G is that a lot of devices are not 5G capable. This supplies 2.4 and 5G. That's what your phone should be able to pick up is 2.4 and 5G. This is operating the video signal strictly on 5G. So if your phone is not 5G capable, guess what? You can fly the drone with a transmitter, but you'll never have video feed. So make sure before you purchase this, guys, that you do have 5G capable phone. If not, you're buying this and it's pointless unless you have another device in your house that is capable of 5G connection. So let's get started here. I'm gonna go ahead and walk out to the field. We're gonna get set up. I'm gonna get all this going. We're gonna do the walkthrough process. I'm not gonna go through all of the settings that this drone has. It has waypoint missions and all that stuff. We'll dabble with what we can. Only having one battery means I have to stop, charge, go back to the house, bring it back out again. We're gonna try to do as much as we can in one review and then me give you my thoughts. So let's go ahead and take this out to the field and I will see you guys in a second. Okay, okay. As you can see, my phone is in here. It actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, no external antennas that I'm aware of, but as you can see, it does not look too shabby. I'm not gonna lie, looks pretty good. Fits right in there with the foam padding. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Even though the controller feels a little on the chintzy side, it's very lightweight. The gimbals actually feel fairly good. Uh, very cheap plastic made though. Um, so anyways, enough of that. So first thing you guys are gonna do is go ahead and turn on the drone first. We're going to click the button and then we're going to turn on the transmitter next. So click the button, wait till you see some LED lights on the bottom there. They are green, we're gonna set that down. I'm gonna turn on the transmitter and it has bound to it, beautiful. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and start up my phone. I am going to go to my Wi-Fi settings. If you guys can see this, Wi-Fi, yay! Oh, apparently there's something wrong with my um, card or I should have restarted, one or the other. Either way, I don't need 4G to do this, so we're good to go. Snaptain, it has connected. I'm going to go ahead and open the Snaptain Nova app. It got boom, it is now open. It says SP500, it knows that we're connected to. I'm going to hit start. I should see FPV. Beautiful, I do, it looks very clean, 1080p. Um, however, it's telling me the drone has, uh, it's down one notch on the battery, which is interesting because I just recharged it, a full recharge. But uh, what you're looking for is this to say good to fly right here, this little yellow, I don't know if you guys can see that little yellow right there, it should, when it's connected to enough satellites and it's ready to go, it'll say good to fly. But the first thing you need to do, is you need to calibrate it uh, before every single flight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hold the NS button down. There we go, it's ready for calibration. I'm gonna set this down. We are going to grab the drone itself and I am going to turn it counterclockwise right and then we're gonna tip it like this and we're gonna finish it off waiting for the lights to turn green there they are they're blinking to letting me know it's done now it's ready for its next calibration which is going to be the gyros so I'm going to hold the compass button down here at the bottom this northeast southwest button I'm gonna hold that down and did it work? I think it worked. 
There we go. Good to go. Okay. Now, as you can see, it says ready to fly. Now it says not ready to fly. This is what I'm talking about. The jumping in and out of satellites thing. See how it says yellow? It goes from red to yellow. Yellow means it has kind of a good lock, but not really a great one. And then it goes back to red. So this is why I said, even though it says ready to fly, guys, give this thing a second. It is running on old legacy settings. Old school, man. Very old school. Um, we're still jumping in and out of satellites here. So let's see how long this really takes. Um, I was able to fly it pretty easily earlier, and I am in a... Wow, look at all the chemtrails. Interesting. Um, wee. So uh, I am in a pretty decent area here. Uh, open anyways. Shouldn't be having any problems. It's interesting that it's taking so long to go here. It says ready to fly, but there we go. Now it's green. Let's see if it maintains green. Still blinking on green. Back to yellow. Back to yellow. Still saying it can fly. Okay, well, I think it's logged its position at this point. It hasn't jumped to negative at all. It's still going in between yellow and green, so I think I'm going to take that at face value. We're going to go ahead and take off. So to arm the motors, you go down and out. If it's going to work, it's not going to work. It's going to be silly. Come on now. All right, well, let's just do this. We will hit the auto takeoff button, which does not seem to be working. I don't know if it's going to let me fly while it's in yellow, guys. It may actually uh, require me to be in green. There we go. Let's try it now. Arming. Arming. Come on, you dog. There's got to be a way to do this. GPS on, GPS off. GPS mode, ready to fly. Let's just hold it down and see if it takes off. That did nothing. Emergency stop. Okay, let's hit the unlock button. There we go. All right, so let's see how steady its lock is. Guys, that's really weird that it did that to me, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and start a recording. I'm going to hold down the dedicated camera button here on the back. And it starts a little counter clock right there, so it is counting. The video feed looks exceptional. I'm actually quite surprised. A little breeze out here, not too much. Um, let's walk around and check its stability. I'm just going to hold this up while we do that. I don't know how much flight time. It already says we're down to two bars, which is interesting. So there's those LEDs I was telling you about on the front there. It's definitely doing a good job holding its position. <coughs> Barometer operated altitude hold though. Something to consider. Okay, well, I have this out of beginner mode. I think the best thing to do at this point is to take it up in the air and fly it and just do what we can. So I'm gonna go ahead and push forward. I'm actually gonna put this in rates level two so that we can cover some good distance. I'm gonna send it out. Oh, look at that. The app froze completely. I have no feed. Oh, come on now, really? It's not even that far. You've gotta be kidding me. Let's see what happens if I reset this. I'm gonna push the back button and we're gonna hit start again. Let's see if I can reset it. Start. You have got to be kidding me. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm pulling back on the transmitter here. Wow. It disconnected that easily. I still have control over it, obviously. But I have no Wi-Fi signal anymore. Let's just hold down here and see if we can get it reconnected again. Oh, that's stupid. Now it won't reconnect. Are you kidding me? All right. Let's land this thing. I'm going to commit to the landing. Okay, land. Cool. All right. What the heck, man? Come on. Really? No video feed at all? I only went like 35 feet from myself. 40 feet in the drop video feed. <sighs> okay. I'm going to drop the app. I'm still connected. Let's reboot the app here. Start. This is a full reboot on the app. Now I have FPV again. It's connected to the snap tane. Let's hold the takeoff button. Down and out. Nope. Apparently... <coughs> it still says it's recording too. That's cool. Um, apparently you have to push the unlock button on the screen every time and then auto take off. That's kind of ridiculous. But whatever. I still have video feed, so let's see how long this lasts for. I still have live FPV, live FPV, live FPV. We're good. We're good. I'm going to turn to the right here. Good. I still have FPV. So a little cramp in the app there. Doing good so far. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and send it out a ways. I still have FPV, which is good. And we are currently distant 71 meters away. I still have good... Uh, oh, no. Here we go. Now we're dropping signal. 
Drop and signal. You know what? I'm still going to send it. I don't care. I'm still going to send it. I could care less. I have line of sight. I have no FPV. Um, oh my gosh, all my telemetry stopped too. I still have control over the bird and I can easily see it. So let's just go until I have a hard time seeing it and then I'll push return to home. How about that? We'll take it into LOS. We're just going to disappear off into nothing land right now. No idea how good the battery is. I can still see it easily going up. I'm still pushing away from myself. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Wow, how savage. That's crazy. Okay, we're, we're very far away now, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit return to home. Let's see how it does. I'm way over the soccer fields right now over there. Oh wow, it's coming back crazy fast. Where's it going? Oh, it actually descended a little bit. It came down a little bit before it started its return to home, I think. What is it doing? It's just like sitting there hanging out. That's what it appears to be doing. <laughs> oh man, it's not returning. Okay, this is getting interesting. Let's just do this. See which way it's going here. There, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm bringing it back to myself now. Interesting. Uh, it's flying really weird. Huh. I'm physically pushing forward and bringing it back to myself, guys. That was the only way to do this. It was not returning to home. Well, that was scary. <sighs> this thing is glitch mode, man. All right, I'm going to start bringing her down. She was twitching really bad. Still says I'm recording, too. That'll be some interesting footage. Whoa, whoa, where are you going? Where are you going? Holy mackerel, it was just off doing its own thing. <laughs> All right, let's try it. I'm going to back it up again, and, <laughs> oh, what is it doing? No, no, where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, low voltage. It's trying to return to home point. I got you. Okay, commit, whatever. It won't let me go very far now because it's registered low voltage. That's stupid. All right, let's return to home and see what it does. Readjusting, readjusting, coming over my head, uh, right above me. Pretty good, okay. Jeez, oh, Pete. And now it's turning around. It's doing things. I can't tell if it's coming down or it's not. Okay, it looks like it's coming down. Oh my gosh, Snaptane, this is a work in progress here. Holy mackerel. This thing, uh. Fuck. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Okay, well, let's stop that return to home. I've stopped it. It still says drone low voltage. <coughs> let's take it for a little cruise here. Heck with it. Let's see how far it lets me take it in low voltage. While I'm not very high in the air. Let's see if it hits the dead stop on me. Yes, it did. Look at that. Oh, what's it doing? It's coming back at full tilt. Crazy. Crazy. Matter of fact, hold on a sec. Yeah, all my settings are set for uh, really good stuff. So apparently once it enters into low voltage mode, it doesn't let you take it very far at all. Let's see what rate level three does. Oh, that's slow. It's only got two rates. Okay, two rates. Wee. Still recording, still airborne. I'm just gonna keep flying, I don't even care. Nice little bank turn. GPS seems to be working pretty good. Despite that glitch we had over there, I got too far away, didn't wanna, <laughs> didn't wanna come home. That was a little sketchy. Nice bank turns, man. Super smooth roll through the turns. Oh my gosh, yeah. You like that, don't you? Oh, talk to me. Let's take it over here. Oh yeah, both sticks at the same time. Right off me, bro. <laughs> All right, both sticks left. Both sticks left. Nice bank turn. Man, this thing for saying low voltage has a ton of battery life left. It's kind of stupid, honestly. Okay, air brakes. Let's go ahead and land. Three, two, one, should be down. Bam, let's stop that recording. Don't forget to stop your recording, guys. 
hold it down the dedicated button until it stops there we go it has stopped recording i still have fpv but i'll tell you what man this is kind of a piss poor design just because of how far it, it only made it to about a little past that dumpster before i lost fpv again so i didn't even quite get to those trees over there and that's only because it's trying to cast a signal back to your phone instead of the transmitter to help it like a repeater like a wi-fi repeater so you can amplify the signal it's not actually doing that so the problem that you're running into here is the fact that there's nothing to cast a higher base signal it's also probably using a lot of power to do that so frustrating well i'll tell you what snap pain i'm not saying it's horrible i'm not saying it's great i'm gonna give it the credit that it's due a kid would have fun with this an adult might get a little irritated quickly with this product but a kid would probably have an exceptionally good time with this product so i would say it's not horrible if you use it like it's meant to be a toy <coughs> obviously you'll probably have an enjoyable experience i'm going to hold this down and turn it off then we're going to turn this off hold that down until that turns off beautiful everything is off now pros and cons um well jello in the footage definitely uh i would definitely say the fail safe this drone claims that it can go 500 meters away without an issue i don't even think i went 230 meters away and i activated rth and it just sat there i had to physically manually bring it back myself if a child had done that he would have lost his drone today so that's that's a little disappointing i'm, I'm going to be honest with you that's slightly disappointing that the fail safe did not work properly i gave it plenty of time to engage and work and it didn't i ended up finally turning off uh, return to home and pulling back on the stick myself and then it finally decided it was going to come home because i told it to with the transmitter so interesting stuff man very interesting stuff i see we have undercover temple terrace down here that's cool there you go so i think i think kids would have fun with this do not go into this with wide expectations that you're going to use this like a big boy toy because the reason I test it so thoroughly the way I do and push the boundaries of these toys is to show you whether it is going to or it's not going to be able to do those types of things. Now maybe guys I'm deferring this because this one could just be a dud you know and maybe it's it's uh, the ones that are out there are a lot better than this. Would I say don't purchase it? I think I think it's a little overpriced for what you get. Um, I think there are better products out there right now currently I really wish SnapTame would step up their game here, man. This is the second drone that I've gotten from them that has had questionable functionality. And I'm really not used to that from a company like SnapTame. So this is me being 100% honest, guys. SnapTame, if you're listening and I know you're gonna watch this review, I'm sorry, I, for a second time in a row here, I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a kid's toy within reason i would not suggest an adult buys this and i certainly would not tell my kid to go out and fly very far with this at all um, keep this thing close quarters a small field like this probably acceptable um, but if you try to push that 500 meters of range that it claims you're probably going to lose your drone just being honest with you guys so drone worship and i am out i hope you guys enjoyed that review don't forget to smash the like button don't forget to hit the subscribe button all that good stuff keep me afloat this is why we do these things this is a lot of fun hopefully snap still chooses to work with me if that's the case and i will catch you guys on the flip toodaroo